Good afternoon guys, welcome to this installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs. Thank you so much for joining me today. So as promised, I have a huge update in regard to mom's car. Um, it's a, it's actually a really big update with my mom's car. Um, so, you know, for those of you who have been following the channel for a while, you know, um, the channel originally featured a 04 Chevrolet Malibu Classic. My mom had owned that car uh, for, let's see, it was like 12, yeah, about 12 years we owned it. And uh, absolutely phenomenal car, but it was just, you know, kind of getting old. It had, uh, I think, either 105 or 106,000 miles, maybe. So it was somewhere around there when we turned it in. And uh, it was a great car. Missed the car. And mom got a 09 Kia Sportage. And, uh, you know, from there, the Sportage has, in a way, just kind of been one thing after, one thing after the next, I guess. Duncan. Hi, Duncan. So needless to say, um, we're going to head over to my mom's now, and uh, I'll explain more when we get there. First, I know some people have been wondering, yes, the Aztec's still here, it hasn't left. You know, once again, plans always fall through with me and this car. <laughs> uh, it's been on delay for getting the radiator. Um, that's really all that I need right now is the radiator. Uh, the uh, brake lines will probably get done in the upcoming weeks now that the weather's nicer. Once the radiator's in and the brake lines are in, uh, there's that small fuel leak that I need to fix from the fuel line, the return line. Chances are I'm going to have to replace the entire fuel line going up to the engine, so the top of the engine, uh, the plenum and stuff may have to come off for that um, but she's still here she's got pollen on her now because the pollen has been showing up um, it got washed and spray waxed a few uh, a few weeks ago like sometime last month or so when I did all the cars for the first time this year but um, I'm thinking my uh, See, I got the towel on the dashboard because I'm still getting water coming in, but it drips off of the rear view mirror, and I think I might have figured out what the deal is. Well, for one, this, this weather stripping was like this when I bought the car. I guess they don't make this anymore, so I don't know what I'm going to do, but the whole windshield probably has to be resealed. But I noticed, you can't really see it now because of the pollen, but um, there's actually bubbling of the paint slight bubbling of the paint right in the center of the windshield right around where the mirror is so the um yeah at some point i'm gonna have to have somebody take the windshield out and maybe just re recalk around it um and the window quit working again <laughs> um i have a feeling what i'm gonna have to do is i think i locked it yeah i did um i'm probably gonna have to replace that entire connector that got corrosion on it inside the dashboard and that's probably going to be a daunting task to do but um yeah it quit working again so that's what i'm thinking i'm still thinking that's the problem area um but i'm not going to worry about that now the windows are up uh you know so i i don't care i want to get the car uh i want to get the car on the road i guess first um fun fact i came out here yesterday to start the car um, because I hadn't started it in a little over a week. So I came out here and I started it up. And it was hot yesterday. It's actually hot now. It's like 75 degrees. Um, but the inside was hot and the windows didn't work. So I put the air conditioning on. And the air conditioner doesn't really blow cold. Like it's, it's better than what it is in the car. Um, but when I was giving it some revs, got a little bit of cold air through it. So there may actually be some... Uh, there may actually be some freon in the in the system um the system may not be bad and maybe it just all leaked out from sitting when when the previous owner had it but um maybe some point in the near future 
uh, we'll we'll try to put some uh, free on, and then once we get the whole cooling system, you know, sealed up for good and whatnot, and we'll see if the air conditioning actually does work. But I noticed around two to three thousand RPM when I had it revving, got some slightly colder air coming through the vents, so that was kind of surprising. Um, all right, so let's hop in the car now that I gave you guys the Aztec update. I know it's been a while. Get in the car and head over to mom's and I'll tell you guys what's going on. One more thing about the Aztec and then I'll, I'll stop talking about the Aztec for now. But um, I ran it out of gas in the one video where we uh, we did the window fix. Um, I ran it out of gas and I put gas in it. I put about four to five gallons in it. Made several trips to the gas station with the gas can and I put some gas in it. And now it's it's been running shaky. So I think I plugged up. Uh, you know, when it completely ran out of gas, I'm sure it sucked up all the sludge at the bottom of the tank. So the fuel system is probably really dirty right now. I probably have some, uh, a couple of clogged injectors. Maybe the brand new fuel filter I put on is kind of plugged up. So um, she's not running <laughs> as smooth as she once was. And I'm really sad by it because I had that car was running completely smooth as silk. Um, but, uh, I'm going to, uh, we'll get some, you know, obviously more gas in there, um, and I'll add some uh, additives to the system. Hopefully we can unclear or clear up some of those uh, block, any blockages that may be in the system. Hopefully that's all it is. Um, but anyway, just thought I'd throw that in there also. Let's hit the road. The whole year just seemed to have been plagued with these stupid issues. Uh, one of the very first things that took place, if, if you recall, was the um, the sunroof had, was leaking. Now the sunroof is, I'm going to try to go over here, the sunroof was an aftermarket sunroof um, and found out, you know, I tried to, to clear the drains myself. Uh, I got the front drains cleared up and it kind of helped a little bit, but the back was still leaking really bad. Um, so, I mean, it was getting to the point where like water would just constantly drip from the ceiling and it was staining the seats after the, the car had been freshly cleaned from buying it. And uh, yeah, so that was upsetting. Uh, we ended up taking it to a place and they tore the headliner down and they actually rerouted the lines because whoever did it the first time didn't really route them properly. So that was part of the problem. Um, so that was taken care of. Um, and then another issue that I saw that was potentially going to be an issue, a big issue in the future. Uh, I don't like the fact that there's all this goop in the engine. I did an oil change and there was just a bunch of, um, a bunch of goop under the oil cap and inside what, what I was assuming was going to be the inside of the entire valve cover. And that, um... You know, I figured it was probably condensation in the engine, moisture, uh, that just builds up in the engine. But hey, it's gotta go somewhere. Uh, why is there so much of that in the engine? So I was concerned about that. My mom's boyfriend was concerned about that. Um, so you know, we're just concerned that the engine was gonna be an issue. Um, but somebody else looked at it and said that it's fine. They all usually do this. It is moisture built up in the engine. I honestly, it's, it would still worry me. I mean, I, I know my Aztec has had moisture built up in it, but I also had a head, a head gasket issue. And uh, even after the head gasket, uh, I was still getting a little bit of moisture on my oil cap and whatnot, but I replaced the PCV valve and that seemed, or PVC, PCV. <laughs> PCV valve and uh, it seems to be okay like there's more ventilation going through the engine so that was something there um, you know so I don't know if if the if the the PCV valves or whatnot or, or some other vacuum line is plugged up or whatnot I mean the engine seems to be running okay but I I just still not too comfortable with that um, not comfortable with that at all and then there's the power steering thing I don't know what is wrong with the uh, power steering all of a sudden but there's a uh, 
there's some sort of strain on the on the pump. I don't know if there's a belt slipping. I think this engine has like three three different belts. <laughs> um, three belts is a lot. Uh, but anyway, so like when you turn the wheel to the left or to the right, and you know there's a lot of strain on it, the power steering pump starts to squeal. Uh, or at least I'm thinking it's the pump. So I don't know if it's the pump or if there is another, if, if maybe there's a, a, a belt slipping. It looks like something may be leaking onto the belt because there's like overspray on the top of the, or underneath the hood on that side where the belt is. So I don't know yet, um, but that's been a concerning issue. Uh, I don't know if, if we actually have an issue with maybe a belt or if we have an issue with the entire power steering pump uh, assembly. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. Got some rust forming already um, on the passenger side near the rear wheel. So the car already is showing rust. Um, not, a, not a fan of that, obviously. So, I don't know. Let's just go to mom's and... Uh, you know, let's have a look-see and see what we can do about these issues. So I think we've come to find that the best solution to fix the Kia was to just get rid of it altogether. <laughs> That's right, my mom now owns a 14 Ford Escape SE. And I know this is a, this is a big deal because, you know, for, for years, you know, uh, you know, I've always been interested in owning one of these um, I was you know you guys have seen the videos where I've looked at them and thought about buying them and ended up going with the fusion just because I honestly just missed driving a car for a while but this was gonna be my my pick and uh, it's we finally got somebody in my family who who owns one and this one's done in the deep impact blue color so no more tan. <laughs> Not really gonna go into full detail of the car just because, uh, you know, we've, they've, it's been featured on the channel many times. It's got a couple of uh, blemishes on the back here. It's really not, not too bad. And of course it's uh, pollen and whatnot, but it's still a good looking car. So yeah, so this one, um, this particular one, uh, we still have the window sticker for it. My mom's the second owner, and uh, the window sticker, uh, I do believe that there's no other options on this car, so this is a base SE, so everything that is seen on the car is all standard. There's nothing optional about the car. So the wheels, uh, it's got some uh, really, really good tires. It's also a, uh, a pre-owned, or a certified pre-owned, so it's a CPO through Ford. Uh, so mechanically the car is sound and backed by a seven year, 100,000 mile powertrain warranty, which for how often my mom drives, she's, there's no way she's even gonna make it up to that, that particular mileage. So yeah, and uh, no more tan interior. It's the charcoal with the gray cloth seats, the standard seats. I think the previous owner, just judging from the marks on this mat, they had the weatherproof mats. They probably took them with them to, to put them in the, the new one. But I find it to be, this vehicle, so much nicer than the, the Kia, to be honest with you because it's honestly more of my taste, but it's also because, uh, well, I don't know. I think it's honestly gonna be a little more reliable in the long run. That's that paper. It was cleaned up. Uh, this particular one didn't get the full shebang yet, so this is probably something that I will take care of in the, uh, in the weeks to come if we're in the, the nice weather. So this one's got 66,938 on the clock so far. 
She runs nice and quiet, nice and smooth. And of course, it being an SE, we've got all of the awesome features. We've got uh, obviously sync with voice command and Bluetooth connectivity. Um, it's got the driver information display, which shows, you know, obviously a bunch of information. Cruise controls, automatic headlights with fog lights. Uh, she's got her Sirius XM on now, the uh, Hair Nation. And of course, uh, you know, AM FM stereo with CD player, air conditioning, with, uh, you know, single zone climate controls. She put her dice around the, uh, the shifter, 12 volt power outlet. Um, it's got the uh, USB auxiliary. Oh, she got the manual and stuff in the house, I think. No, the manual's down here. So that means the sticker is right here. And I do believe, like I said, yeah, no optional equipment. So everything that this car has is all standard. So that's neat. So overall, I mean, whoever had the car seems like they, they actually took care of it. That was something that I was kind of worried about with the, the Kia. Um, because the Kia really didn't seem like anybody, uh, you know, took care of it. And that was one of my concerns in the long run after having it for so long. This one actually has a tire jack. My mom, uh, the Kia didn't come with the jack or all of the, well, anything that, to change the tire really. So that was the thing. The handle on this one's, uh, you know, they all do this, I guess. There's actually a service bulletin, I believe, in regards to this where, you know, it's kind of weak up there. So that's something that we'll have taken care of at some point in the near future. This one has the 1.6 liter EcoBoost 4 cylinder. And my mom says it's fast. <laughs> I'm, honestly, I'm not... 100% thrilled with the Echo Boost engine because um, I have heard a couple of horror stories in regards to them. And this one had a recall for something with the coolant, but it was fixed before the car was uh, purchased, so that was already taken care of. Um, seems like it's a pretty decent engine. Now I've honestly always been a fan of the two-liter Echo Boost engines, but this being just a base SE, uh, the 1.6 is usually what you'll find in these. A lot of the ones that I see nowadays anyway have the 1.6, but we'll see. We'll see how uh, how it holds up. Now, if, if it wasn't a CPO, I probably wouldn't have uh, been 100% on board with that particular engine, but it's going to be covered. It's going to be covered, you know, and like I said, my mom only put 3,000 miles on the Kia in one year, so she really doesn't go out, you know, as much as she does. She goes to do her her job and then she comes home and maybe you know get the groceries and whatnot but she doesn't go on trips or anything so i think this i think this is going to be a pretty pretty decent car in the long run no. okay so hey you almost match your car again when you bought the car you were wearing like dark blue and purple and stuff every time i see you now you're matching the car don't touch the bird poop so mom, what do you think about your escape so far? You've only had it for a little over a week. What are your impressions on it? Um, I love it. And I can really see a difference from me driving the Kia. And um, I'm just, I'm enjoying it. And it's got a great sound system. Oh, I bet it is better than the Kia. And, uh, but to be honest, yeah, I mean, I can honestly say that th this drives so much better than my Kia. I mean, it's it's just awesome. I mean, it really takes off. <laughs> and you were you were so afraid to give up the Kia because I was, I was. Well, I, you know, I had it for a year, and I got to really, you know, I I liked it. I I enjoyed it. Uh, but after driving this, there's no turning back. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. I thought you'd say that. Do you realize that it's almost been a year since we got rid of the Malibu too? No. <laughs> oh my god. 
Yeah. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. What don't you like about this car so far? Is there anything that you've found within the week that you're not really 100% on? That's a good question. Um, wow. Hey, if you got nothing, that's pretty good. You know what? I can't think of anything. <laughs> I honestly can't. Uh-uh. Cool. Okay. I, like I like everything that it features. I wanted to talk about, like, the Bluetooth. Do you like the Bluetooth thing with the, the phone and, and whatnot, or...? I don't know how to work it yet. <laughs> I'm not quite used to it, so I'm sure I'll... One thing I'll tell you, I am so glad I know how to work the... Um, oh, my God. The... Oh, help me out here, Michael. Which one? <laughs> Just... Um, cruise control. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. Oh, yes. But with the Kia, I don't know what it was. I could never use it because I had a hard time. She couldn't figure out how to use the little stick. The Kia had a stick on the wheel, uh, and just, uh, this just has a button. It's a little more simpler. Did yes. you use it? Not yet, but I know how to. <laughs> you got it all figured out. Yes, yes, I do. Yeah, it's it's a lot simpler than, than what the Kia was. And I like everything that it features. Um, stuff that my Malibu didn't have, and now and then my Kia didn't have, and now I moved up to this. So I feel pretty special. <laughs> <laughs> Do you miss your tan at all? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's, it's a lot better. Uh, no, I, it's a lot more lively. Even Chelsea, she goes, Mom, now this is you. This is your color. Yeah, apparently so, because <laughs> you, you, you're matching so much. Okay, I'm not going to take up any more of your time. Alrighty. Thanks for letting me drag you out here. Well, thanks for the interview. Okay. <laughs> it's the time of the year when all the uh, bunnies come back out. Don't worry, I'm not that close to him. He just sits there. <laughs> Alright then. Okay, so to sum it all up, you guys know that I've had my escape for three years before I traded it in for this. And when I got rid of it, I didn't really have anything wrong with it. It was going to need a battery, and that was probably about it, to be honest with you. I had two issues with it the entire three years. The one issue was very, very minor. It was the fan speed resistor. That was an easy $25 change to do. Uh, the other issue could have been a major issue if I didn't catch it in time, but that was when the axle started leaking transmission fluid. Uh, and that was because of a poorly machined axle that they stuck, or half shaft, I should say, that was stuck into the transmission. That was an issue that uh, a lot of escapes of that era had. Been corrected, ordered the part, and did it myself with the help of my friend. We both did it. But that could have been a major issue if I didn't catch it in time. Um, but I caught it just as it was beginning, so it really wasn't that bad. But that's it. The rest of the escape history with me has, has been pretty much flawless and um, you know that was why I wanted to keep on getting escapes and stuff so even though my mom's escape is a different generation than what I had I still think it's going to be better it's definitely going to be better than the uh, Kia um, this is the third key I gotta take it back to the dealership um, but anyway yeah so that's it <laughs> problem solved if you guys enjoyed this if you guys are anxious to see how this escape holds up and uh, I really don't see too many too many problems coming from this car but uh, you never know right so uh, you know if you guys enjoyed this give it a thumbs up comment and subscribe check out teespring.com slash store slash Mike's vehicle spotlight for all of your MVS and vlog merchandise and that's all that I've got for you guys today so hopefully I'll have an Aztec um, repair video coming up soon hopefully I'll have the radiator soon 
Brake line's done. Really, all, all that we need to do from there is get some, maybe, uh, you know, change out a couple of those tires. And I need brakes for sure. The brakes are so rotty, and, like rusty and, and rotted. and So uh, that'll be it. Then technically the car is drivable. I got to get plates for it, and then it's drivable. So very soon. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you again for watching, and take care.